All right, sorry for the noise. The jacuzzi needed to be filtered out, so hopefully this video um, is usable when I'm done with it. Uh, this is not necessarily a review, but an overview or a check of the Moose Trex bike packing bags. Uh, all lashed up to my salsa rangefinder. Um, I have a full set uh, saddle bag, full frame bag, top few bags, stem feeder, some fireworks, and my bar bag. Um, I had bought a lot of cheaper bags on Amazon and had to return them because of the uh, the size most notably, but also the material quality, which is not even close to what I had hoped for. So I returned those and spent mm, almost twice as much to get this full kit here. And this is kind of perfect, exactly what I wanted, because obviously you could spend even more than this. You could spend double or even triple what I spent on the moose treks, but for your average rider, for people just getting into it, I think this is perfect. One thing I really like is the ripstop nylon on basically everything, even the, even the feeder, top tube, everywhere. So a much more durable material across all the bags. Um, I'll just go over the stem feeder real quick. On the website it says that you can fit a 32 ounce Nalgene. This is sort of an awkward shaped 24 ounce water bottle. Um, could you fit a 32 ounce Nalgene? I think you could fit it in. The question is, you're not going to enjoy getting that out, are you, with this? Uh, I wouldn't necessarily count on throwing Nalgene's in here, unless you wanted to use it as a reservoir, but that's not really what you use feeders for. That's for while riding, drinks, and nutrition. You can see at the bottom there's a nice little drainage hole. Um, it has two Velcro straps to the bars of the stem, and then just to make sure it's not moving around too much, a strap that attaches to your fork crown, or if you're not a riding suspension, just your fork leg. Uh, the draw cord, I guess I'll try to put my bag back in. Draw cord, pull up on that, for that chunky terrain so your stuff doesn't fall out, and then of course there's I think three mesh side panels, but it's kind of hard to access one of them. So basically two mesh panels for various <clears throat> energy bars and such. Uh, the top tube is very basic. Um, I should say that the stem feeder and the top tube are just a touch more expensive than I'd like, considering the simplicity. I suppose you could say the stem feeder is uh, um, slightly, you know, has more going on, but the top tube is literally just the bag, and it's still about 25, 30 bucks, but ultimately, it's a good bag. Um, two strapping points, just one on your frame, and one that goes around your stem, or your uh, spacers below the stem. Uh, all the zippers on these bags are really nice. Not only the pull cord for it, but the actual seam. My bad, horrible filming. The seam is nice and um, very nearly, they're, they're not necessarily waterproof. They are splash proof. I'm not gonna do a test right now. They're definitely splash proof, but um, if you're under a heavy downpour, make no mistake, eventually the water's gonna get in. It is just the bag, it doesn't have any dividers, and I really wish, I almost want to just stitch my own mesh, just like this. I want to stitch a mesh panel in the side so I can fit more energy bars. I wish they'd done that 
Maybe if they see this, they'll re-release a new version with that. Um, the frame bag. Oh, I was just going to mention also the size for the top tube is uh, 8 inch long, 5 inch tall, and then it's 3 inches wide at the uh, top and then 2 inches wide at the bottom. So basically 2 and a half inches wide. Um, you don't really want necessarily more, much more bigger than that. Uh, that's perfectly fine. Uh, the frame bag comes in three sizes. Uh, it is a full frame setup. And I actually ordered it before I got this bike and just kind of got lucky. Uh, I'd advise you to have your bike in hand, get those measurements in, because with the way they're built, it's so nice to have a frame bag that's just corner to corner, a perfect triangle for your bike. And then at the very bottom there's space, which uh, I'll just be putting an inner tube with a Velcro strap on soon. Um, it does have dual zippers, two sections, and they are um, divided. It is hard to pull the zipper when there's nothing in it. There's a divider. Velcro. Now you can open it up. Sorry if it's horrible filming. But yeah, you can get an idea of how big the bottom section is. And right now, since I uh, don't have a, an extra strap, I just put the tube here and my tools here, which is, I have plenty of space left because now I got this new pump that's way better. Or I should mention some of the other stuff I got. And then this is the top section of the bag where I'll put uh, a whole variety of things from extra food and beverages to just clothes and whatnot. Really quick, I want to mention I got these new pedals. The Rock Bros knockoff Crank Brothers stamp pedals, just because the color matches perfectly, perfectly with my frame. And Eli actually has the same. My friend has the same uh, frame color, so we both got these, and the pedals are great. Also, I got WTB slick tires, not thick slick. These do have a tread pattern, unlike the thick slicks. And for 29 inch wheels, they come in 2.2 and I'm actually, I haven't gotten to, to ride them yet. They just came in, I just put them on. But I can't wait to ride these because not only are they great road tires, but these actually look like good gravel tires. I could definitely see uh, a lot of gravel riding going down on these considering my other knobbies in 2.6 are so huge. Uh, so those are my two upgrades and then this toe pink Road Morph G pump is awesome. I know I'm going off topic from the moose treks, but I just wanted to get those things out of the way because I had mentioned upgrades in the last bike check video. Bar attachment. <laughs> All right, moving on to the bar bag. You'll have to excuse how I strapped it up. Um, I'm actually not riding them right now. I went on a ride today without them, and then I'm going on a ride tomorrow without them, so I put just about zero effort into strapping them correctly. But I'll show you generally how you're doing it. You have these foam pads that create space and separation. There are just Velcro straps that go over your bars. Um, that are connected with the pads. You can see how they go through the pads. And then you have a nylon buckle that you can tighten up to really cinch the bar up. And that really helps with um, with trying to wrap it around all your cables. I mean, if you have, like me, dual brakes and your shifting cable and your dropper cable, it's really hard to get everything done in right, and when you start messing with your cable tension, you'll start noticing your 
gears are indexed wrong, your dropper post doesn't have the right tension. It's a nightmare. And then it also has these hook straps, which also cinch down and basically act as compression straps for the dry bag itself. And then at the bottom, I didn't do it though. Oh, you can see it's hanging out here. Yeah, sorry, I didn't do it because I didn't, like I said, I put zero effort, but this goes on your head tube. The foam will create separation on your head tube so it doesn't get damaged. And then this strap goes around. I think I do it. I think my friend does his on the bottom and I do mine on the top. It does have some adjustability. You can see these straps here. You can either go through there or the top one there. So if you're more of a top tube guy, go through that one. If you're a down tube guy, you go through that one. It depends on your bike's build. Mine are actually not ideal for either uh, with these giant mountain bike tubing. It can be difficult, but uh, it does work and it works pretty good. I, the design of it is a little awkward. I'm not even sure how I would improve it, what I would say, but even just those slightly longer strap would help, especially for us mountain bikers who have these giant aluminum tubes and all kinds of different shapes and whatnot. Um, the bar bag is about seven, eight, seven or eight inches in diameter and it can adjust from 15 to 24 inches long. I probably have it somewhere in between right now. It's rolled up a good bit on either side. So the max volume is 15 liters. And there is stuff in it right now. I have my tent with the poles inside of it. And I have my tiny sleeping mat. And you can tell with how much it's rolled up and how much space. I'm not even close to capacity. Um, the previous bag I bought from Amazon, the cheap one, I could not fit the tent with the poles in. I would have to put the tent in, that's all it could take, and then put the poles on the outside and strap them all on, on the outside individually in the cradle. It's horrible. This is much, much better. And uh, it's also kind of nice, because my friend Eli bought this bag and I was saying that's probably too much bag for you because um, he has a, a road bike with drop bars, but um, he actually quite likes it. And of course, you're able to go down to 15 inches, but he just likes all of the adjustability, which makes sense. In between how it straps down, these hook straps, and how small it can get, you don't need to use all the size. And also, if you want your bag to be um, as waterproof as possible, it's ideal to have space to roll up obviously if you're if you can only roll it once there's a good chance water can get in if you're uh, in a rain or something like that and let's move on finally this video's getting pretty long to the saddlebag the saddlebag has a max volume of 16.5 liters which i'm not really demonstrating very well right now um what's in this bag right now it's just my sleeping bag my sleeping blanket sort of a little synthetic down guy um on the website they say that it is not dropper compatible and what they mean by that is these straps have no it doesn't come with anything that protects your dropper stanchion um, I have a dropper. I can't actuate it right now because the seat is strapped down to the bag, which is strapped for this. Um, but I'm probably not going to swap the seat post out because, near as I can tell, so long as your minimum insertion gives you enough pedal length, um, which you really want to get that right if you're touring, going long distance or anything, don't jeopardize that. Um, but so long as you have the normal post, enough space on the minimum insertion, you can strap to that safely. You cannot extend your dropper and strap to the stanchion. 
because if dirt and dust gets in that Velcro, as it almost certainly will, and then rubs up and down while you're riding and scratches the stanchion, then that can scratch the seal, damage the seal, and completely ruin the functionality of your dropper post. So that's what they mean by don't use a dropper. If you are in doubt of what I just said and have no idea what I'm talking about, just get a normal seat post. Swap it out with a rigid. I actually was going to do that, but once I realized my minimum insertion was just about perfect for my um, pedaling length, I decided to just keep that. So the seat post has two straps that just loop around, and then you have these buckles that go around your rails, and that's going to keep the sway down. And obviously this is your main point. It Saddlebags feel really awkward, and of course they look awkward if you're not used to them. Um, but if you really strap it down and cinch it down right, and make sure you're pulling on your nylon and getting good tension, um, it, you won't even notice it while you ride. It should feel perfectly fine. Uh, of course, if you go to like the max weight of whatever they say on the website, it's like 10 pounds, you're going to get a little sway, a little awkward, but uh, just make sure you're strapping it down right. Um, you could even maybe add some more straps of your own or think of some other ways to do it. Um, so there's a nylon buckle for uh, cinching down and compressing the extra space. Obviously I'm not using very much now so it has a ton of rolls in it and I had to basically pull I think the nylons at the end of its limit, yeah. You can see it's like at the very end. Um, just to get it tight enough and still a touch loose. And then the top has this pretty standard cordage so you can basically bungee down various things like if you have your cold weather jacket and you just don't have space for it in your bags it can stay up there or maybe if you have you know various things like your sleeping pad is very light or um, your sleeping your down sleeping bag is very small you could put it up there and of course you'll have a bit more room if you roll it out some more So that's just an overview. Um, I've been riding with them on every now and again, and I ride with the with the frame bag every day, and then every now and again I'll put on the top tube and feeder just for normal rides, just because of the convenience. Uh, I haven't done a shakedown yet. I want to make sure I do it with my friend, with Eli, so we're trying to figure out what would be an appropriate ride and location to do an actual shakedown, have everything up, get to the location, take it all off, set up the tent, break it down, put it back in and ride home, stuff like that. Or maybe even do a legit sub 24 hour overnight or somewhere. But uh, I do have a big trip planned later this summer. And that will be the big test for the bags. And I suppose after that one, we'll do a whole review of basically everything I did and used on that trip. Mostly the bike and the bags. Uh, let me know if you have any questions. These Moose Trex bike packing bags, I should mention they also have panniers. But I am not running panniers because I don't have traditional racking points. Um, these are great sort of intermediate bags. They are not cheap bags and they're not really expensive bags. The material quality is good and most importantly the ergonomics of everything and how you strap them down is also good.